We direct to estimate characteristic time scale. So f is uh, some physical quantities. We direct to find out the time scale to change the f. So from the these equations, actually we could estimate the characteristic time scale to change f. So if we consider this is a differential equations and the tau is a constant, we direct to integrate this differential equations dt over tau, and they integrate it both sides, and then its f is expressed f sub zero exponential t over tau. F is increasing by factor of e after the time of the tau. So tau is a characteristic time scale. So in this session, we'd like to consider the time scale for dynamical change of time scale, thermal change time scale, and the composition change time scale. So each time scale is did estimated. Tau dynam dynamical change is R is a radius of a stars divided by the change of the radius of the stars. Summer change is an internal energy divided the change of the internal energy. And the composition change is the composition of the element is changing. So x over round x round t. So we use these three equations to estimate dynamical change. Thermal change, composition change. First of all, we'd like to estimate dynamical change. So for the dr dt, to estimate these quantities, we use a escape velocity. And the escape velocity is expressed as square root 2gm over r. So you can substitute this escape velocity here to estimate the dynamical time scale. Then it becomes 1.1 times 10 to 3 seconds. If you consider mass of a star is a solar mass, and the radius of a star is a solar radius. Then this thousand second is really, really short time scale, much, much shorter than the stellar age. So thousand seconds, we could, our human beings also observe the dynamic change of our stars by our observations. So dynamical process occurs in the stars whenever the gravitational force is not balanced by the pressure force. Always the inside of the stars, two competing forces acting inside of the stars, gravities and pressures. When the pressure is weaker than the gravities, so gravity is stronger, then result in the contractions of the materials. So radius is decreasing. When the pressure is stronger than the gravities, the object star is expanding. So this is a dynamical time scale. How long does it take for such a contraction and expansion happening inside of the stars? So we estimate is a just thousand seconds. So sometimes it ends up with a catastrophic collapse or explosion. This is a supernova explosion. Or restorations of the hydrostatic equilibrium. So most of the case in the main sequence star and in the second case, returning to the original position because the shape of the star is uh, maintained. So we call the dynamical balance is maintained soon. Now we'd like to estimate thermal time scale. Internal energy is obtained using a video theorems. So Internal energy is expressed. This is the gravitational potential energy, gm square over r. We need to t multiply some factors, but this is the order of estimate. We don't have to care about factor. So this, this is a kind of the time scale to change the temperatures. So u is here, and then energy is lost as the luminosities. You can divide it by the luminosity of a stars. Then if we use a mass of the star is a solar mass and the radius of the star is a solar radius, luminosity of a star is a solar luminosity, then it's a 30 million years. Still, this is much, much shorter time scale than the stellar age. So also we could find out the thermal equilibrium always maintains inside of the stars. 
So summer time scale is called the Kelvin Helmholtz time scale because they use this time scale to estimate the age of the suns. So Kelvin uh, actually claims age of the solar system, age of the Earth is uh, 30 million years based on the, this calculation. But of course, this is not the correct ones. And then he has a really big discussion with Charles Darwin. And Charles Darwin actually claims the age of the Earth should be the much, much longer than the 30 million years. And finally, we know that Charles Darwin is actually won the dis discussion. Because Kelvin estimates the age of the suns before the Einstein appeared. So conservation of energies. If a star maintains both thermal and hydrostatic equilibrium, total energy have to be the conserved by the Virial theorems. So this means E equal omega plus U is the total energy. This is total energy. Gravitation potential energy and the U. And you can apply the Virial theorems. U is a minus 1 over 2 omega. So this is 1 over 2 omega. This is total energy. If the total energy is conserved, omega is conserved. Omega is conserved, U is conserved. So each component, omega and the U, independently actually conserved. So if the contraction occurs in some part of the stars, other part of the star should expand to conserve the gravitational potential energies. So if we consider the stars, if the central region is contracted, so to conserve the omega, actually outer region have to expand. Okay? And if you consider the stars, central region temperature is increasing. So outer region temp temperature have to drop to conserve the internal energy. So Vidal theorem is a really strong theorem to explain the observational fact. And uh, finally, we'd like to estimate the nuclear time scale. The mass is the energy. This is a statement by the Albert Einstein, actually based on the special relativities. E equal energy is equal mc squares. And using the, this equation, we'd like to estimate the nuclear time scale. mc squares divided by the luminosities. Then we can estimate it's 1.6 times 10 to 13 years. This is much, much longer than the stellar age. Right now, age of the sun, we estimate, is 5 billion years. This is much shorter than the 1.6 times 10 to 13 years. We don't expect the nuclear equilibrium. So star consumes only a small fraction of their nuclear energy. So keep consuming. So finally, we reach this relation. Dynamical time scale is shorter, much shorter than the summer time scale. And the summer time scale is much shorter than the nuclear time scale. Then, actually, the, the, if we consider nuclear time scale, when we consider the stellar evolution, most of the cases, we assumed dynamical equilibrium and the summer equilibrium. Fundamental equation for the stellar evolution is uh, further simplified, is uh, these three equations. Okay. Initial structure is not important because of the dynamical equilibrium is maintained. And the thermal equilibrium is maintained. And the nuclear time scale is long, so change of the element we have to follow. So these three equations we need to solve to study the stellar evolution. Okay, this is the end of this session.